Hungarian Defense Forces Hungarian Defense Forces is the national defense force of Hungary. The president holds the title of commander-in-chief of the nation's armed forces. The Ministry of Defense jointly with chief of staff administers the armed forces, including the Hungarian Ground Force and the Hungarian Air Force. Since 2007, the Hungarian Armed Forces is under a unified command structure. The Ministry of Defense maintains the political and civil control over the Army. A subordinate joint forces command is coordinating and commanding the HDF Corps. In 2016, the armed forces had 31.080 personnel on active duty, the operative reserve brought the total number of troops to 50,000. In 2017, military spending will be $1.21 billion, about 0.94% of the country's GDP, well below the NATO target of 2%. In 2012, the government adopted a resolution in which it pledged to increase the defense spending to 1.4% of GDP by 2022. Military service is voluntary, though conscription may occur in wartime. In a significant move for modernization, Hungary decided in 2001 to buy 14 JAS-39 Gripen fighter aircraft for about 800 euros million. Hungary buy three new Airbus A319 and two Falcon 7X transport aircraft and have three C-17-3 Goldmaster from the USA. In 2017 Hungary buy 20 new Airbus military helicopter, and ground bombs for Gripens. Hungarian National Cyber Security Center is reorganized in 2016 in order to become more efficient through cybersecurity. In 2016, the Hungarian military has about 700 troops stationed in foreign countries as part of international peacekeeping forces, including 100 HDF troops in NATO-led ISAF force in Afghanistan, 210 Hungarian soldiers in Kosovo under command of Kfir, and 160 troops in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hungary sent a 300-strong, logistics unit to Iraq in order to help the U.S. occupation with armed transport convoys, though public opinion opposed the country's participation in the war. One soldier was killed in action by a roadside bomb in Iraq. During the 18th and 19th century, Hungarian hussars rose to international fame and served as a model for light cavalry in many European countries. In 1848-49 HDF achieved incredible successes against better trained and equipped Austrian forces, despite the obvious advantage in numbers on the Austrian side. The 1848-49 winter campaign of Yusef Bem and the spring campaign of Artur Gorgi are to this day taught at prestigious military schools around the globe, including at West Point Academy in the United States. In 1872, the Ludovica Military Academy officially began training cadets. By 1873, HDF already had over 2,800 officers and 158,000 men organized into 86 battalions and 58 squadrons. During World War I, out of the 8 million men mobilized by Austro Hungarian Empire, over 1 million died. During the 1930s and early 1940s, Hungary was preoccupied with the regaining the vast territories and huge amount of population lost in the Trianon Peace Treaty of Versailles in 1920. Conscription was introduced on a national basis in 1939. The peacetime strength of the Royal Hungarian Army grew to 80,000 men organized into seven corps commands. During World War II the Hungarian Second Army was near to total devastation on banks of the Don River in December 1942 in battle for Stalingrad. During the Socialist and the Warsaw Pact era. 1947 to 1989, the entire 200,000 strong southern group of forces was garrisoned in Hungary, complete with artillery, tank regiments, air force and missile troops with nuclear weapons. As of 2016 Global Peace Index shows, Hungary is one of the world's most peaceful countries, placed 19th out of 163. Since 2007, the Hungarian Defense Force has been under a unified command structure with all operational units falling under the Hungarian Defense Forces Combat Command. The two branches of the Defense Forces, the Hungarian Air Force and Hungarian Ground Forces have now only administrative functions. Logistics support for the Defense Forces is managed by the Hungarian Defense Forces Logistics Center, while the training for all units is the responsibility of the Hungarian Defense Forces Formation, Preparation, and Training Command. The Hungarian Defense Forces Central Military Band, Magyar Anbetsa Kos Pontis and Ekar, is the representative musical ensemble of the HDF although it was officially founded in 1962. Its history goes back to 1896, when the first Hungarian military band of music was established in Budapest. Today, the Central Band maintains a fanfare unit as well as a drum corps. The primary task of the Central Band is to take part in national, 
military, and protocol events. Other activities include cultivation of Hungarian soldiers and wind music traditions, the promotion and amateur brass bands. The Central Band is a regular participant in international and domestic festivals, and nearly a dozen CDs of performances by the Central Band have been published. The 32nd National Honor Guard Battalion, MH32. Budapest Orest de Sensford, is the official Guard of Honor unit of the HDF. It was founded on January 1, 2011 in order for the regiment to take part in the welcoming of foreign dignitaries to Budapest and in the changing of the Guard at Sondor Palace. The official ceremonial Honor Guard of the Hungarian People's Republic was the 7015th Ceremonial Regiment of the Hungarian People's Army. The Hungarian tribes of Arpad Vizer who came to settle in the Carpathian Basin were noted for their fearsome light cavalry, which conducted frequent raids throughout much of Western Europe, as far as present-day Spain, maintaining their military supremacy with long-range and rapid-firing reflex bows. Not until the introduction of well-regulated, plate-armored night heavy cavalry could German emperors stop the Hungarian armies. During the Arpads the light cavalry-based army was transformed slowly into a Western-style one. The light cavalry lost its privileged position, replaced by a feudal army formed mainly from heavy cavalry. The Hungarian field armies were drawn up into an articulated formation, as it happened in Battle of Przemysl, 1099, Battle at Leda, 1146, Battle of Morvimetso, 1278, 1349, in three main battle, formation, 1146. 1278, 1349. According to the contemporary sources and later speculations, the first line was formed by light cavalry archers, Battle of Oslava, 1116, 1146, 1260, 1278. Usually, they started the battle followed by a planned retreat, 1116, 1146. Battle of Crescent Brunn, 1260. The major decisive battles of the Hungarian army were placed in the second or third lines consisted mainly of the most valuable parts of the army, in general heavy cavalry, 1146, 1278, 1349. The commanders of the Hungarian Kingdom's army used different tactics, based on a recognition of their own and the enemy's, Holy Roman Empire, Pechenegs, Uses. Cumans, Mongols, Byzantine Empire, abilities and deficiencies. The Hungarian Knight Army had its golden age under King Louis the Great, who himself was a famed warrior and conducted successful campaigns in Italy. Duetto family matters, his younger brother Mary Joanna I, Queen of Naples who murdered him later, King Matthias Corvinus maintained very modern mercenary-based royal troops, called the Black Army. King Matthias favored ancient artillery catapults, as opposed to cannons, which were the favorite of his father, Johannes Hunyadi, former regent of Hungary. During the Ottoman invasion of Central Europe, between late 14th century and circa 1700, Hungarian soldiers protected fortresses and launched light cavalry attacks against the Turks, see Hungarian Hazars. The northern fortress of Eger was famously defended in the autumn of 1552 during the 39-day siege of Eger against the combined force of two Ottoman armies numbering circa 120,000 men and 16 ultra-heavy siege guns. The victory was very important, because two much stronger forts of Solnok and Temesvar had fallen quickly during the summer. Public opinion attributed Eger's success to the all-Hungarian garrison, as the above two forts had fallen due to treason by the foreign mercenaries manning them. In 1596, Eger fell to the Ottomans for the same reason. In the 1566 Battle of Sigidvar, Miklos Sereini defended Sigidvar for 30 days against the largest Ottoman army ever seen up to that day, and died leading his remaining few soldiers on a final suicide charge to become one of the best-known national heroes. His great-grandson, Miklos Sereini, poet and general became one of the better-known strategists of the 1660s. In 1686, the capital city Buda was freed from Ottomans by an allied Christian army composed of Austrian, Hungarian, and Western European troops, each roughly one-third of the army. The Habsburg then annexed Hungary. Under Habsburg rule, Hungarian hussars rose to international fame and served as a model for light cavalry in many European countries. During the 18th and 19th centuries, hundreds of thousands of forcibly enrolled Hungarian males served 12 years or more each as line infantry in the Austrian Imperial Army. Two independence wars interrupted this era, 
that of Prince Francis II Rakochi between 1703 and 1711 and that of Lajos Kossuth in 1848-1849. July 11, 1848 Act of Parliament in Budapest called for the formation of an army, the Anvetseg, of 200,000 which would use the Magyar language of command. It was to be formed around already extant imperial units, 20 battalions of infantry, 10 Hussar regiments, and 2 regiments of Sheke from the Transylvanian military frontier. They were further joined by eight companies of two Italian regiments stationed in Hungary and parts of the 5th Bohemian Artillery Regiment. In 1848-1849 the Anvetseg, mostly made up of enthusiastic patriots with no prior military training, achieved incredible successes against better trained and equipped Austrian forces, despite the obvious advantage in numbers on the Austrian side. The winter campaign of Yusef Bem and the spring campaign of Artur Gorgi are to this day taught at prestigious military schools around the globe, including at West Point Academy in the United States. Having suffered initial setbacks, including the loss of Pest Buta, the Han took advantage of the Austrians' lack of initiative and reformed around the Debrecen based Kossuth government. The Hungarians advanced again, and by the end of spring 1849, Hungary was basically cleared of foreign forces and would have achieved independence were it not for the Russian intervention. At the request of the Austrian Emperor Franz Joseph, the Russians invaded with a force of 190,000 soldiers, against the Anvetsegs 135,000, and decisively defeated Bem's Second Army in Transylvania, opening the path into the heart of Hungary. This way the Austrian-Russian coalition outnumbered Hungarian forces 3 to 1 which led to Hungary's surrender at Vilagos on August 13, 1849. Sondor Petufi, the great Hungarian poet, went missing in action in the Battle of Sagasvar, against invading Russian forces. In April 1867, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was established. Franz Joseph, the head of the ancient Habsburg dynasty, was recognized as both Emperor of Austria and King of Hungary. Nevertheless, the issue of what form the Hungarian military would take remained a matter of serious contention between Hungarian patriots and Austrian leaders. As the impasse threatened the political union, Emperor Franz Joseph ordered a council of generals in November of the same year. Ultimately, the leaders resolved on the following solution in addition to the joint, KUK, army, Hungary would have its own defense force, whose members would swear their oath to the King of Hungary, who was also Emperor of Austria, and the national constitution used the Hungarian language of command, and displayed their own flags and insignia. Austria would also form its own parallel national defense force, the Landwehr. As a result of these negotiations, on December 5, 1868, the Royal Hungarian Landwehr, Magyar Kirai Anvetseg, or Defense Force, was established. The Anvetseg was usually treated generously by the Diet in Budapest. By 1873 it already had over 2,800 officers and 158,000 men organized into 86 battalions and 58 squadrons. In 1872, the Ludovica Academy officially began training cadets, and later staff officers. Anvetsa units engaged in maneuvers and were organized into seven divisions and seven military districts. While artillery was not allowed, the force did form batteries of Gatling guns in the 1870s. In the midst of trouble between the imperial government and the parliament in 1906, the Anvetseg was further expanded and finally received its own artillery units. In this form, the force approached the coming world war in most respects as a truly national Hungarian army. Hungarian soldiers fought with distinction on every front contested by Austria-Hungary in the First World War. Anvetseg units, along with the Austrian landwehr, were considered fit for frontline combat service and equal to those of the joint KUK army. They saw combat especially on the Eastern Front and at the battles of the Isonzo on the Italian front. Out of the 8 million men mobilized by Austria-Hungary, over 1 million died. Hungarians as a national group were second only to German Austrians in their share of this burden, experiencing 28 war deaths for every thousand persons. After the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in late 1918, the Red Army of the Hungarian Communist State, Hungarian Soviet Republic, conducted successful campaigns to protect the country's borders. However, in the Hungarian-Romanian War of 1919 Hungary came under occupation by the Romanian, Serbian, American, and French troops, as after four years of extensive fighting, the country lacked both the necessary manpower and equipment to fend off foreign invaders. In accordance with the Treaty of Bucharest, upon leaving, 
the Romanian army took substantial compensation for reparations. This included agricultural goods and industrial machinery as well as raw materials. The Trianon Treaty limited the Hungarian National Army to 35,000 men and forbade conscription. The army was forbidden to possess tanks, heavy armor, and an air force. On August 9, 1919, Admiral Miklos Horty united various anti-communist military units into an 80,000-strong national army, Nemechi Hatsereg. On January 1, 1922, the national army was once again redesignated the Royal Hungarian Army. During the 1930s and early 1940s, Hungary was preoccupied with the regaining the vast territories and huge amount of population lost in the Trianon Peace Treaty at Versailles in 1920. This required strong armed forces to defeat the neighboring states and this was something Hungary could not afford. Instead, the Hungarian regent, Admiral Miklos Horty, made an alliance with German dictator Adolf Hitler's Third Reich. In exchange for this alliance and via the First and Second Vienna Awards, Hungary received back parts of its lost territories from Yugoslavia, Romania, and Czechoslovakia. Hungary was to pay dearly during and after World War II for these temporary gains. On March 5, 1938, Prime Minister Karl Mandarani announced a rearmament program, the so-called Gear Program, named after the city where it was announced to the public. Starting 1st of October, the armed forces established a five-year expansion plan with Huba I-3 revised orders of battle. Conscription was introduced on a national basis in 1939. The peacetime strength of the Royal Hungarian Army grew to 80,000 men organized into seven corps commands. In March 1939, Hungary launched an invasion of the newly formed Slovak Republic. Both the Royal Hungarian Army and the Royal Hungarian Air Force fought in the brief Slovak-Hungarian War. This invasion was launched to reclaim a part of the Slovakian territory lost after World War I. On March 1, 1940, Hungary organized its ground forces into three field armies. The Royal Hungarian Army fielded the Hungarian First Army, the Hungarian Second Army, and the Hungarian Third Army. With the exception of the independent fast-moving army corps, Jurshatist, all three Hungarian field armies were initially relegated to defensive and occupation duties within the regained Hungarian territories. In November 1940, Hungary signed the Tripartite Pact and became a member of the Axis with Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy. In April 1941, in order to regain territory, Hungary joined the Germans in the invasion of Yugoslavia. After the controversial Kassa attack, elements of the Royal Hungarian Army joined the German invasion of the Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa. In the late summer of 1941, the Hungarian Rapid Corps, Gershatist, alongside German and Romanian army groups, scored a huge success against the Soviets at the Battle of Uman. A little more than a year later and contrasting sharply with the success at Uman, was the near-total devastation of the Hungarian Second Army on banks of the Don River in December 1942 during the battle for Stalingrad. During 1943, the Hungarian Second Army was rebuilt. In late 1944, as part of Panzer Army Freder Pico, it participated in the destruction of a Soviet mechanized group at the Battle of Debrecen. But this proved to be a Pyrrhic victory. Unable to rebuild again, the Hungarian Second Army was disbanded towards the end of 1944. To keep Hungary as an ally, the Germans launched Operation Margaret and occupied Hungary in March 1944. However, during the Warsaw Uprising, Hungarian troops refused to participate. On October 15, 1944, the Germans launched Operation Panzerfaust and forced Horty to abdicate. Pro Nazi Ferenc Szalasi was made prime minister by the Germans. On December 28, 1944, a provisional government under the control of the Soviet Union was formed and liberated Debrecen with Bela Miklos as its prime minister. Miklos was the commander of the Hungarian First Army, but most of the First Army sided with the Germans and most of what remained of it was destroyed about 200 kilometers north of Budapest between 1 January and 16 February. The pro communist government formed by Miklos competed with the pro Nazi government of Ferenc Szalasi. The Germans, Szalasi, and pro-German Hungarian forces loyal to Szalasi fought on. On January 20, 1945, representatives of the provisional government of Bela Miklos signed an armistice in Moscow. But forces loyal to Szalasi still continued to fight on. The Red Army, with assistance from Romanian army units, completed the encirclement of Budapest on December 29, 1944 and the siege of Budapest began. On February 2, 1945. 
The strength of the Royal Hungarian Army was 214,465 men, but about 50,000 of these had been formed into unarmed labor battalions. The siege of Budapest ended with the surrender of the city on 13th of February. But, while the German forces in Hungary were generally in a state of defeat, the Germans had one more surprise for the Soviets. In early March 1945, the Germans launched the Lake Bolotone offensive with support from the Hungarians. This offensive was almost over before it began. By March 19, 1945, Soviet troops had recaptured all the territory lost during a 13 day German offensive. After the failed offensive, the Germans in Hungary were defeated. Most of what remained of the Hungarian Third Army was destroyed about 50 kilometers west of Budapest between 16 March and March 25, 1945. Officially, Soviet operations in Hungary ended on April 4, 1945 when the last German troops were expelled. Some pro-fascist Hungarians like Salashi retreated with the Germans into Austria and Czechoslovakia. During the very last phase of the war, fascist Hungarian forces fought in Vienna, Breslau, Kostrin, and along the Oder River. On May 7, 1945, General Alfred Jodl, the German chief of staff, signed the document of unconditional surrender for all German forces. Jodl signed this document during a ceremony in France. On 8 May, in accordance with the wishes of the Soviet Union, the ceremony was repeated in Germany by Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel. On 11 June, the Allies agreed to make May 9, 1945 the official victory in Europe. Salashi and many other pro fascist Hungarians were captured and ultimately returned to Hungary's provisional government for trial. During the Socialist and the Warsaw Pact era, 1947 to 1989, the entire 200,000 strong southern group of forces was garrisoned in Hungary, complete with artillery, tank regiments, air force, and missile troops, with nuclear weapons. It was, by all means, a very capable force that made little contact with the local population. Between 1949 and 1955 there was also a huge effort to build a big Hungarian army. All procedures, disciplines, and equipment were exact copies of the Soviet Red Army in methods and material, but the huge costs collapsed the economy by 1956. After the autumn 1956 revolution was crushed in Budapest, the Soviets took away most of the Hungarian People's Army's equipment, including dismantling the entire Hungarian Air Force, because a sizable percentage of the army fought alongside the Hungarian revolutionaries. Three years later in 1959, the Soviets began helping rebuild the Hungarian People's Army and resupplying them with new arms and equipment as well as rebuilding the Hungarian Air Force. Satisfied that Hungary was stable and firmly committed once again to the Warsaw Pact, the Soviets offered the Hungarians a choice of withdrawal for all Soviet troops in the country. The new Hungarian leader, Janos Kater, asked for all the 200,000 Soviet troops to stay, because it allowed the Socialist Hungarian People's Republic to neglect its own draft-based armed forces, quickly leading to deterioration of the military. Large sums of money were saved that way and spent on feel-good socialist measures for the population. Thus Hungary could become the happiest barrack in the Soviet bloc. Limited modernization, through, would happen in from the mid-1970s onward to replace older stocks of military equipment with newer ones to enable the HPA, in a small way, to honor its Warsaw Pact commitments. The HPA was divided into the ground and air forces. The ground forces were organized into Air Force's headquarters at Vesprem. Training for conscripts was poor and most of those drafted were actually used as a free labor force, especially railway track construction and agricultural work after just a few weeks of basic rifle training. Popular opinion grew very negative towards the Hungarian People's Army and most young men tried to avoid the draft with bogus medical excuses. In 1997, Hungary spent about 123 billion Hungarian forints, $560 million, on defense. Hungary became a member of NATO on March 12, 1999. Hungary provided air bases and support for NATO's air campaign against Serbia and has provided military units to serve in Kosovo as part of the NATO led K4 operation. Hungary has sent a 300 strong logistics unit to Iraq in order to help the U.S. occupation with armed transport convoys, though public opinion opposed the country's participation in the war. One soldier was killed in action due to a roadside bomb in Iraq. The parliament refused to extend the one-year mandate of the logistics unit and all troops have returned from Iraq as of mid-January 2005. Hungarian troops are still in Afghanistan as of early 2005 to assist in peacekeeping on detalibanization. 
Hungary will most probably replace its old US 4x4 vehicles with the modern Iveco LMV types. Hungarian forces deploy the Gepard anti materiel rifle, which is a heavy 12.7mm portable gun. This equipment is also in use by the Turkish and Croatian armed forces, among other armies. New transport helicopter purchases are on the list before. Most probably this will happen before 2015. In a significant move for modernization, Hungary decided in 2001 to lease 14 JAS-39 Gripen fighter aircraft. The contract includes two dual-seater airplanes and 12 single-seaters as well as ground maintenance facilities, a simulator, and training for pilots and ground crews, for 210 billion Hungarian forints, about 800 million euros. Five Gripens, three single-seaters and two two-seaters, arrived in Kecskemét on March 21, 2006 expected to be transferred to the Hungarian Air Force on March 30th. Ten or fourteen more aircraft of this type might follow up in the coming years. In early 2015 Hungary and Sweden extended the lease program for another 10 years with a total of 32.000 flight hours, 95% increase, for only 45% increase in cost. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.